Hi, everyone. My name is Mickey Hudson, and I am hosting today's My so Net Live. So today, if you are unfamiliar, we are going to be doing buffalo plaid. Now, I called it buffalo plaid, but it could be any kind of plaid. Um, and we're going to be showing, I'm going to be showing you a couple of different ways to do some plaid with your MySoNet embroidery software. Now this, this instruction is going to require that you have the MySoNet levels silver or platinum. Um, unfortunately, this cannot be done on the gold, uh, the, excuse me, the gold level. Uh, let me untie my tongue and start that sentence over again. The, what we're doing today can be done on the MySoNet Gold and the MySoNet Platinum. There's, it's unable to be done on the MySoNet Silver. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff to be done on Silver. And if you're thinking about whether you want to upgrade your software, come on in and let's take a, a, a ride. So what we're going to be doing today is a couple of different types of plaid. So I have a couple of stitch outs here. So there's all different types of plaid that can be done. You can do the traditional, just a uh, two color. You can do uh, with extra stitching. So you can see how I put some straight stitching in there. We can do it with a fill. You can even do fonts and fills and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm also going to be touching on embossing because I know that was asked. And Sandy and Will, if you are watching this, when I was making them, I've made this with you in mind. Um, so this one in particular is going to end up on the MySoNet library very soon. Um, so watch out for that. Um, all right. So let's get going. Um, I do want to just take one more second and uh, do a special shout out to our software educator, Janie Lance. Um, she does a lot of writing and um, training, and she will be doing some of the MySoNet art events that in the, in the future, and she's fabulous. But there was a couple of times where I ran into a wall and, and it was like, I can do this better. And she was the one that helped me over those little hurdles. So I want to give a special thought, shout out to Janie Lance um, for being there. Um, at one point, it was just talking it out. It was like I already figured it out. And the other one, she just came up with a great idea. So um, I really, really want to thank her for that. So let's get over to the software. And as usual, I'll be working on a PC for the most part. Um, however, if anything is substantially different, I will show you on the Macs as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with the gold level of the software. And we'll go ahead and open our software. And when you open it and you get to this, when I say software, it's the MySonet embroidery software. And when we open the MySonet embroidery software, we land on the welcome page. And if you have gold or silver, gold or platinum, you will have uh, these little icons down here on the side. I can open up different modules or wizards or anything like that right from here. And so that's where we're going to go ahead and start. So with gold has the wizards and platinum has the wizards. So we're going to start with the quilt block wizard. And this is going to open up the quilt block wizard. And what I want to do is, as you can see, there's all these different ways we can use the quilt block wizard. Uh, we can add an embroidery. We can do shape outlines of shapes, no shape, or just outlines for like stitch in the ditch and that kind of stuff. We are going to choose the outline quilt block with a filled inner shape because we're going to create this shape. All right, we're going to go ahead and click next. And this up here in shape, we have all these different shapes to choose from. And if you see, 
they are very much like our quilt block shapes. So things we would find in, when we make a quilt, this is usually how we piece things. But we're going to go ahead and stay with the square. And then I'm going to change the size to 200. It already is, but we're going to change the size to 200. Now I am going to be, I am throwing out numbers. You're going to change the size to this. You're going to change the spacing to that. But basically, this is kind of just to kind of point you in the right direction. I am really encouraging you to experiment because there's really cool, fun stuff you can do with these techniques that I'm going to be showing you. So don't get so hung up on the numbers um, that you're missing everything else. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create my square, change my size, and I'm going to click Next. Now up here we have shapes too, but this we have a much larger variety of shapes. So we can create pretty much any kind of shape we can think of. And if you don't see it in here, then digitizing is your friend. We're gonna come down to the hearts and I'm going to choose Lost my train of thought. I'm going to choose heart number 72. Now down here, I'm going to change the size to 120. And this size came from me experimenting, and I just liked this size. I'm going to go back for one minute because I got a little ahead of myself. When we created this box square and we put in the size, it also, I can also in cho choose to include a cut line. So what this does is if I wanted to do a quilt block and then have a cut line for putting things together, it gives me a, um, a stitching space, a seam allowance. So I, and over here with options, I can change my seam allowance to whatever I want. However, in this case, I do not want a cut line. So I'm gonna say, I don't want one. So I'm gonna click next. We're still at 120. I'm going to click next. So here we have the quilt block wizard. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with this, we can stipple, we can do channels, we can do crosshatch, we can do all kinds of fun stuff, echo, contour, and even shapes. But we're going to go with motif. It always defaults to the stars. But if you look at the right hand side of all of these options, there is an option for each choice that we have. So I'm in the motif, I'm going to come over to options. And this allows me to make changes. So first of all, I told you that this one is just defaulting to the stars. But I can choose a different pattern if I wanted to just by choosing on the pattern. Up here where it says group, I have different groups to choose from. Universal, Who's Corn of Viking, and Faf. So Who's Corn of Viking and Faf, they're sisters. So if you have one or the other, you can experience some of the stitches from the one you don't have. But today we're gonna be choosing the Who's Corn of Viking, we're going to keep it on the utility stitches, and I'm going to scroll down to stitch number 23. Now, once again, this is just from my experimentation. Um, this is the one that I liked and decided to show you. We can choose a second motif if we would like. We'll talk about that in a moment. We can choose the spacing options. Now the spacing options is the gap. We can choose how much gap there is in between each individual stitch. So each rotation, so this little stitch here, I can say I want a, gap, a big gap between the two before it goes to the next one. So that's what that gap does. Um, the vertical is going to change the gap in between each other. So the whole row, I want to change the spacing in between my rows. 
And then the offset is the same thing. I can offset the spacing however I want as well. So again, I got I changed my vertical gap to 100 and I offset horizontally by 10. And this was just by experimentation. So there's no hard and set rule that says you have to use these numbers. I'm also going to click on options because here I can change my angle, my stitch, my length, all of that good stuff. And I'm going to change my angle to 135 degrees, which is the opposite of 45. So we're going to come back to 45. Um, so I will show you. But no, nope, we're going to go ahead and change that to 45. All right. But do you see how the 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 gap is here and the offset is? Let me change the offset just a little bit so you can kind of see. Let me do the 10 in the vertical offset, and you can see that it's, uh, oh, this one needs to be zero. Dinner button. So you see how this one kind of grouped them together a little bit versus evenly, and that's why I'm kind of playing with want the horizontal. You see how that evens that out just a bit more? And then when we're done, we can go ahead and click finish. And that will lay it out. Ooh, ah, wow. But right now I have a box around this because I selected a square. Now, uh, gold and platinum level both have the modify tab. And this is what we're going to do is I just want to select um, just the heart. So I'm going to click on box select and I'm going to click and drag around the heart. And now there's a box just around the heart. I'm going to come up and cut it, physically remove it. And then if I select the home tab again and paste it, you can see now I have two. Sorry about that. Now I have two designs. So copy. If you cut something, you're going to physically remove it and then paste it. If you copy it, it's going to stay here, but it's got one in your hand so that you can paste it. Then there's copy and paste and duplicate. Copy and paste, I'll show you, it's going to land right on top of itself. And duplicate will make a copy a little off center. So it's easy if you're going to move designs around. Okay. So we cut this to physically remove it from the first design and I'm going to select this first design and I'm going to come up and I'm going to delete. So now we're just left with just the heart. And I'm going to select this heart and I want to come and double click on my color and I'm going to select black. Now this is a little trick that I've known about but Janie also kind of re you know, uh, reinstilled it in me. If you want to select black, click on white, and your black will be right here. So right above the white. If you click on black here, it comes up with navy. So there's nothing wrong with either, but if you want true black, just click on white and take a shortcut. Right? But wasn't that easy? But that's not really plaid, is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to copy because I want one directly on top of the other. So I'm going to choose copy and I'm going to paste. So it looks like I only have one, but there is actually two here. 
And if I zoom it, well, I won't zoom in because it's just going to shrink it. But on the box around here, we have the flip handles. So I'm just going to come here and just give it a flip. Ooh, look at that. So it keeps it centered. It keeps it directly on top of the previous one. And this is how you can get a nice flip. And I'm going to change this color to red. Ooh, ah. So what do you guys think about that? It's pretty easy, huh? Are there any questions about that? No questions? Ooh, guys are good. All right. So what I did is I just have, I've grouped this together. So I've selected both designs and I came up here and clicked on group. I know it's grouped because it's orange. All of those little handles mean different things. So let me actually, I'm going to command C and ungroup. And ungroup, whoops, I don't want you. And ungroup. So you see how the handles here are white? So those white handles mean something. That means that these are fixed S stitches. If I want to um, edit this design, I either have to go to Modify or to Stitch Editor in Platinum. If once I group them, I'm going to When it comes to Premiere Plus, you're just going to have to give it a try and see, because I don't remember, to be honest. Um, but once I group it, this changes the color. So it's letting me know it's grouped. It's also giving me the little grouped icon here as well. Now, somebody asked a question, would you want to remove the outline stitch from the second heart? Let me redo, because I want my colors. Um, I actually didn't, and it really didn't, oops, it didn't bother it too much, but you could if you wanted to. You could also do a satin line, which we're going to be doing with um, digitizing. All right. Now, if you'll notice this heart here. Oops, wrong button. This heart here, this is the one I just did. And this one, I have an extra stitch. Well, how did I do that? It's just as easy. So in this, because my software is already open, I'm going to go to my Create tab, and I'm going to choose the Quilt Block Wizard. I'm going to do the same thing. So my square is the same size. Um, I want to do the heart 72 once again. And I'm going to change it to 20 just because I like the size of that. And I'm going to go to my motif. And I'm going to select the motif that I used before. So I'm going to go to, oh, no, I'm on utility. All right. So this is all good, but I have one motif and I have two motif or motif two. So I'm going to come over to motif two and I'm going to tell it I want to use two motifs. Now here I'm just going to use just a straightforward, um, not that, a double stick. And I'm going to tell it OK. And I got a little excited. Hold on a second. So we've got our stitch number 23 in one. We have our reinforced stitch. I want to change the spacing. And I still want to change this to 100%. I'm still going to offshoot this. I think it was 10. And I want to change my options to 
345. I'm going to leave it at a running stitch and I'm going to leave the length at 3.0. And there we get some spacing. So you see there. Now everybody remember what we did? We told it we're going to finish. Let me select these two. I'm going to select one of the previous hearts. I'm going to hold my shift key down and select the second one. And if when I'm on the home tab, I can just hit group and I can just move this sucker right out of the way. I am going to change my hoop size to Gigundo, which is 360 by 260 just so I can have a little more space. All right, so we have another heart here. We have that box outside of it. So I wanna go into modify and I want to box select the heart and I'm going to come up and cut it to physically remove it. I can go home and I can paste. And I'm going to just select that box and delete. So once again, I can change my color to black. And once again, I'm going to copy. Everybody remember why I'm going to copy and paste so that it'll la land right on top of each other. And if I just flip it and change the color, I can create, whoops, I want to group those. All right, what happens if I do that? Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm out. I want to be right on top of each other. Well, I'm going to select one of the hearts that I want to center, and I will come up here and center in hoop. Boom. And I will select the second one and come up here and center in hoop, and they will land right on top of each other. So what I forgot to do before I started moving things was to group them. So I'm going to select one of the hearts I want to group, hold my shift key down, select the second heart I want to group. Stop it. All right, there we go. And I'm going to group. All right, so now I can move them without them coming apart. And actually, I hit the shift key. I did not hit the shift key. I held the shift key. But let me move these so I can zoom in a little bit more for you. But this was how I did the two designs that you see right here. Cool, huh? Woohoo! And easy. All right, I'm going to zoom to fit, which will bump this zoom back out to show the whole hoop. All right, do we have any questions about that? All righty. All right, so which one of you is going to teach it next? But isn't this fun? Isn't this fun and easy? And there's a whole bunch of different shapes to choose from. There's all kinds of fun stuff that you can play with. Um, but now we're going to get into the platinum level. So the platinum level just gives you more, more. There's more options. There's more um, creativity. Digitizing allows you to have a little more freedom. So we're going to go into um, the digitizing. And I'm going to be showing you uh, variations of this type of plaid. So very, very cool stuff. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Another thing that the handles will tell you is when there's circle, that means it's outside of the hoop. When it's square, it's inside the hoop and can be embroidered. All right. So for those of you that have MySoNet embroidery software, you can just uh, select the Create tab because all of the modules are all built in all at once. 
So you don't have to go to another module. So the, the Premiere Plus, you have to go to digitizing. But we're going to come right over here and we're going to click on, the, we're selected the Create tab, and we're going to come over here to Digitizing and click on Digitizing. It's going to automatically open the um, digitizing. So can I use do this using super designs? That is an excellent question. And I did try like crazy. Now, there are some things with this, the super designs that you might be able to do something like this, like this, but you cannot change uh, from a fill to a um, motif. So uh, you just have the different fills to choose from. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do with super designs, but unfortunately going from a fill to a motif um, is not one of them. But I did try. So that was an excellent question. All right. So one of the things here is on the Mac side of things, when you open up uh, digitizing, you will not have this window. You Everything in Mac is kind of already just built in. So with the PC and you open digitizing, you do get this window. So I can create an express embroidery, an express trace, an express border. I can load or create a background picture. Um, I can open load an existing design, or I can start with just no picture. Now the load or create background picture, there is a lot of fun to have in that, but we're gonna start with no background picture. When you start with no background picture, there's a couple of choices that you have. If I need to select a hoop size, I will click next. If I want to select my hoop size later, I can click cancel. So if I click next, the very next step is to change the hoop. But if I either already have my hoop size and I'm happy, or I'll change it later when I figure out what I'm doing, I can just click cancel and it'll just take me right to my work my workspace all right so with the the other question is can you do this technique using the shapes in word sculpt so the word sculpt doesn't do a traditional fill like um like quilt block wizard will or your digitizing will it will create a shape so if you were to use uh, quilt block wizard to create a heart and do the fill, you can then use word sculpt to create a satin border around it if you prefer, because the shapes that are in Quilt Block Wizard are also in uh, word sculpt. There are more shapes in word sculpt, but yes, the shapes can be used the same. So you can use word sculpt to enhance your Quilt Block Wizard designs, but you cannot fill it because it's designed to be filled with either nothing or with words. Okay. But that's a good question. And I do use my word sculpt for a lot of things it wasn't designed for. So I'm all for playing around. All right. So what we want to do first here is we are going to create, um, do the quick create. So I'm going to come over to quick create and I'm going to explain this just a little bit for you guys, uh, because those of you that may be new to digitizing, um, this will help kind of clear it up. And the more you play with it, the clearer it will be. Now, Quick Create is down and dirty. I want a pattern fill, I want a satin line, and I want a shape. And it's like, I get what I want. If I had a background, I could do quick stitch and click on the background and bam, I have, it's going to fill it in. I'm going to hold the, um, I'm going to do un click, click undo. I don't know why I'm so tongue tied today because I want to get rid of my shape. But quick create is just that. It's quick, quick, quick. It's touch, it's point, it's drag, it's, it, I just touch whatever I want to fill and it will do it for me. Freehand create is a little more for the artistic type, I say, or if you have a steady hand or if you have something specific. 
So I'm going to create line and area. But for this one, you can see how I have a pen or a pencil in my hand, my cursor, and I need to hold the mouse key and draw. And I, as you can see, do not draw very well. But this is not the end of the world. If you know you want a flower, all right, I can go back home and edit my point. So I can clean things up, move things around, and do all that fun stuff. However, when it comes to freehand create, if you have one of those draw tablets, um, those are great. Um, and if you have a steady hand, I cannot draw a happy face, so I do not play in, point, in freehand create very often at all. So what I did here was I selected the design in my film strip, and I right click. And that's how I got this menu up. So I'm going to come down and I'm just going to delete. So there's many ways to do many different things. And then point create. And if I create the line area, this will allow me a little more control. So I can kind of come and create more of a flower and I have a little more control. I can come and make adjustments as I'm going along. So if I've screwed something up, I can fix it as I'm going. I can still edit it later, but quick create and point create are where I live when it comes to um, digitizing. I'm gonna right click and that will finish my command. But as you can see, my cursor still has a little point on there. So it, this is so if I wanted to add something else, I can still add because I'm still creating. If I right click again, it will release that and I have a regular cursor again. All right. So I am going to just go home and I can delete from here and select it and delete. So there's lots of different ways. I can right click and delete. I can use the delete on my keys, my icon on my ribbon, ribbon bar. But to get back on the, the plaid, so what I did the first two times was use the motif. This time we're going to use a pattern fill. So I'm going to leave my pattern fill selected, but I do not want a satin line around it. I want a running stitch. So if I click on the word satin line, I get a drop down menu and I'm just going to choose a running stitch. And if I come on over here, these are my shapes. And if I use the drop down, I can pull all these shapes that we've been playing with. And we've been using 72. So let me find 72. So there's the heart of 72. But before I set it i also want to come down and i'm going to change my fill area and line so back to the super designs when you go to super designs you have all of these different fills to choose from and if you have a line around the outside of something like the applique stitches for instance then it gives you the option to change that line to a motif line but when you have the super designs it has these fills to choose from which is quite fun and it it will lead you down a rabbit hole because once you start playing with them it is really fun but what i'm going to do is i found and this was one of the things that janie helped me with was the gradient and lace option works really well for um doing this kind of plaid where we're doing this let me show so we're doing this kind of fill. Now, this one only has one color. I'm going to show you with uh, two colors the way we've been doing. But I'm going to choose a gradient and lace. And I'm just going to use 253, the very first one. Okay. Now, this is where I am going to change this angle to 135. So 45 and 135, that's how we're going to get that crisscross. I always just, it's just the thing I do. I do it first. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay. Now, when it comes to an underlay, I don't want any underlay because my fill is going to be my design. 
So what the underlay does is it 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 runs like a foundation it it runs like a foundation stitch under your uh, embroidery. So if you have a stable fabric, you need a low underlay, and if you have an unstable fabric, having more of a foundation before it does the heavy work will lead to a flatter, uh, smoother design. However, like I said, this we're going right to the fabric. I do not want any underlay under that. It's going to interfere with this pretty design. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the underlay off. We're going to leave the compensation at zero. I'm not going to talk too much about that for this tech, for this project, um, because I want to show other stuff. Now the density. So once again, density um is just how tight your stitches are so if you think of a zigzag stitch when you're sewing and if i change my stitch my stitch length to a bigger number what happens to that zigzag all of a sudden that zigzag starts spreading out and if i change my stitch length to a smaller number that zigzag gets really tight density is doing the exact same thing so if i change my density to a bigger number there's going to be more space in between my stitches. And if I change it to a lower number, it's going to be less space in between my stitches. So it was just, I just got something up on the my screen. Um, apparently, guys, somebody asked for written instructions. There are going to be written instructions for uh, these techniques. And they will be on the MySewNet Studio. And I'm hoping soon. Um, because I did write it up for this so you guys could have it. Um, so there will be some instructions coming. All right. So back to the density. So the density is at two right now, which is telling me it's a little bit tight. I'm going to change my density to 10. So a bigger number is going to give some space in between my coloring. Now I'm going to also click on gradient. And when I click on gradient, all this other stuff lights up. Now this I wanted to show you on the, on the Mac side, just because this is, it just looks different. So instead of going to, to fill and line option or fill line and air fill area and line you're going to click on options first but we do have that same thing we still have all of the fills but your gradient is going to come here now all of the stuff that i am going to be doing next on the pc side is right on this window now with you with the mac users you have to click on this to get this window open so this is just for the Mac users. When you click on gradient, you're going to come and click on that little ellipsis. But the Windows people, we have it all right here on our screen. And don't get all on your high horse. There's some things that Mac does that's easier and some things that the PC does that's easier. But they do pretty much everything the same. What we're going to do is we're going to choose multicolor. That means it's going to change color. And I can add markers. So right now it's going to go from this yellow to this brown. And it's just going to slowly change as it goes. But what I want to do is I want to create kind of red, black, red, black, red, black. So I'm going to add markers. I want a total of five markers. So you see how it gave me these little, instead of just having two markers, I now have five. And I'm just going to kind of space these out a little bit so they're kind of distributed evenly. So everybody with me so far? So now I have five markers and it's still changing from the light to the brown. So that yellow to the brown. And if you see here, I got yellow, 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 brown. So what I want to do is add some color changes. If you click on one of the markers, and then come down here to thread color. There's a little edit color icon right here. I click on this and I'm gonna choose black. So I'm gonna to go to my white and choose the black and tell it okay. And I'm going to choose the next one 
and change it to red. Red has a fast color. And I'm going to click on the next one and change it to black. So I'm just going to go black, red, black, red, black, red. Now, these can be any colors that you want. It doesn't have to be black, red, black, red, black, red. And I'm going to come here to the white. But you see here now there's a, a kind of a consistent variety going on here. All right. And I'm going to tell it, okay. So we've set everything up. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on shape. So we've selected the shape, but we have to click on shape to set it. And this is going to just drop it right there. Oh, look at that. So I want to change the size of this because it is quite small. So I'm going to select my home tab. And if I come over to the modify block, now my Mac users are going to have to go up to the edit. I'm going to swipe real quick. You're just going to come up to the edit and you can change the design size right in the edit pull down. But for my PC people, you're going to go to the home, select the home tab. On modified block, where it says modified block, there's a little pull down. And if you click on that, we get these options here. And I'm going to change the design size. And I can change this to 120 millimeter. So I'm going to tell it, okay. So look at that. All right. I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So when I say, I'm going to go to view so I can just turn my grid off so you don't see the lines in the back, okay? This little guy here is a jump, so that's what you're seeing here. These icons here, so there's a green and a red. The green has an S and the red has an N. So the S is this is where it's going to start and the E is this is where it's going to end. So I'm actually going to just pull the end down to the bottom. And I do kind of play around with it a little bit until I kind of get rid of some of those jump stitches. Um, it just makes it a little cleaner. And then I can come up and take a look what it looks like in real view. So this is the real or life view. And I can rotate the angle and take a look. Ooh, ah. Mm, I love it. It's, it's so fun. I can also click on design player and this is going to show you how it's going to stitch out. I'm going to speed it up a bit. So especially when I'm digitizing, real uh, life view and design player become very, very important for me because it saves me stitch out time. So I can kind of see how things are going before um, I have to stitch it out. All right, I'm going to select the Home tab, and I am going to uh, box select this so that I can have a box around it. I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to flip. Nope, I don't need to flip on this. I need to copy and paste, and then in the film strip, we're going to come and select one of the hearts. really doesn't matter which one. And if we right click and come down to properties, we can change things. So our angle is 135, which is the opposite of 45. So I'm going to change this to 45 and change the angle so that it is now flip flopping each other. And I'm going to right click. See how there's a box in my cursor? That means I still have box select selected. If I right click, I can see my edit points. I can see my start and end. And so I'm going to change my, I'm going to put my end back up here and I'm going to put my start in a different place. Yeah, I'd probably play with that a little bit. All right. But you guys get the idea of what's happening? Yes, any questions? 
Now, this is something that is cool. For those of you that have Premiere Plus 2, this is something that is really cool with the MySoNet embroidery software. Not only have they added things to make things easier, but everything is integrated. So I don't have to go to my, my digitizing module. I can just go to my Create tab. I don't have to save this as an EDO file. I can just exit out of digitizing and it ends up in the MySoNet embroidery software. And do you see how he, these handles are green? So I can come to and select my home tab. And if I go, whoops, I really want to make a change. I can come up and edit the design and it's going to automatically open digitizing for me. So I don't have to fuss so much with uh, my modules, which is so amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of digitizing and we have this. So right now I have two designs kind of on top of each other. Um, I want to go ahead and I'm going to go home and I just want to make sure that I can, nope, it, I don't need to do that. I want to color sort. So I'm going to select this design because look at all of this stuff it has. So I'm going to color sort. And then I am actually going to fix it as stitches. Now, if I wanted to save this and be able to edit it later, I can copy it. I can, whoops, sorry, I'm so used to right clicking. I can copy it and paste it and save it in another um, window. But what we need to do in order to modify it is I need to fix it as stitches. Now, once you fix it as stitches, if I go to edit design, now it's going to open up in stitch editor because it's fixed. Okay. But I just want to come into modify and I am going to, oops, it got ahead of me. And I am going to change these colors. I want to change this to black. I should have done that before in digitizing. And then I change it to black. And I just want to get rid of my red. So I'm just going to uncheck all of the black. And then I come up here and box select. So I'm coming up here to box select. And I can select this. And I can just delete it. Ooh. So now if you take a look, that is how I did the other heart that I have in my stitch up. So I can stitch out the two-tone. I can make more colors if I wanted to, um, or I can just stitch out the one-tone. Isn't that cool? So like I said, there's going to be a write-up. I got one more thing I want to show you. Um, there was a whole bunch more I wanted to show you, but in part, you know, it's, my eyes are always bigger than my stomach. But I do want to show you uh, one more thing, and that is how to emboss. And the reason I'm going to, I want to bring this up was this was kind of a special request. There were people, as soon as we announced this, they kind of uh, let our social media crew know that they want, they were hoping to, that I would add embossing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do embossing. Now, um, if you're unfamiliar with what embossing is, oh, I should have had my sample down here. But um, you find it a lot in like towels and anything with a high pile. What the embossing does is it will lay down some of that pile so that your design or your open or your negative space will pop through. So I went ahead and opened up my software to digitizing. I'm going to start a design with no picture. I can click next or remember, I can just click cancel. I don't have to click anything. It's just cancel and I'm going to select view now on the Mac side you're gonna to go to the same place but it's already up here you don't have to click any of uh, select any tab it's all gonna be right at the top but you're gonna look for edit background and has a little pencil on there and this will open automatically draw and paint which is something I don't think that um, Premiere Plus 2 has. I think it's a separate program for Premiere Plus 2. 
But what I can do here is I'm going to go to my insert and select my insert tab. I can insert shapes, I can insert fonts, I can insert files, I can insert designs from the design gallery. There's so much stuff I could do. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come here and I'm going to select a shape. And think about this kind of on a towel. So I personally like this shape and I'm gonna insert it. I can come over to my draw tab and I can change the size. So I'm gonna get my shape kind of the way I want it. And I'm going to come over here and center in the design, which is down here. I can change the color, like I don't need an outline. I just want this color. And I'm gonna change my color to something darker, just for grin. I'm gonna go back to insert, and this time I want to add a letter. So I'm gonna choose a big, bold letter. This is a true type font. And you can load any true type font onto your computer and use them. I mean, I've got some really funny, silly ones that I like to find with, they're just shapes, because these can make really cool embroideries. And so there's all kinds of fun stuff that I look for but I'm just gonna choose Arial Black. I'm going to choose the letter D because my husband's name starts with D and I want it to be able to show a space. So an, a closed letter where like F, where there's no opening in the middle is a little bit easy. So I wanted to do a A, a D, a B, something that had that center. So once again, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to change this color to a lighter color so you can see it. And I'm going to change the size and center it. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and center it. So now I have the emboss. So this is the part that I want to emboss down. And this is the part I want to stick through. So let's say I'm doing a towel. I want this to smoosh down the towel so that the towel part pokes out of there. All right, once we're done and we're happy, we can go ahead and exit out. And now I'm gonna go to Quick Create. So in Quick Create, I am just going to select, uh, on the satin line, I wanna just do a running stitch and I'm going to choose a motif Fill. So we're going to kind of be doing more of the same of what we've already done. I'm going to come on over to my fill area and line. Remember Mac, you hit options or uh, click on options first. And I'm going to select, whoops, I want to go to Viking. And I'm going to utility and come down to stitch number. I'm gonna choose my spacing, so I'm gonna offshoot it 100. I'm gonna gap it and then I'm gonna offset it 10. And I'm going to say I wanna do uh, 135. The line, this is gonna be the outline that I, the running stitch that I've chose to go around it. Um, we're just gonna leave that the same and we'll go ahead and click okay. Now, when you're doing the quick create, we have quick stitch, which if I click, it's just gonna fill this whole area. But if I select quick stitch and auto hole, it's going to leave this part open. It knows that this is a separate part of the image. So I'm telling it, don't leave that up, leave a hole, leave an auto hole right there. So I'll click okay there. And okay. And see how I get that? I'll click in the center there and pull it okay. Ooh. And I can go ahead and group this, or I can just come out here. I'll first let me change the color. I'm going to change this color to black. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to add a color. Whoops, I don't want to do it right there. I want to come to my last item on my film strip. I'm going to add a color and I'm going to choose red. 
and it's going to add a color right under here. So my next one will be stitching in red. And I'm going to come down to my fill area and line. And I'm going to change the options and change that to 45. I do forget, excuse me, I want to change this to a satin stitch. So when I come over here in the line, it's going to say, how wide do you want that satin stitch to be? I'm going to say I want this to be three, a little more narrow. All right. So now if I select the quick stitch with auto hole, it's going to do the same thing in the opposite direction with, with a border around it. Now, if I go to view, I can say I want to get rid of my background so that it doesn't interfere. So do you see how I created, this is gonna mush down the towel and this is gonna leave the towel opening open but this is, why are you giving me, I know, I know, there we go. But isn't that cool? Isn't that easy? Are there any other questions that I can answer for you guys before we go? Because um, we do have a few more minutes. But hopefully that answers the embossing. And like I did show where we added two motifs instead of one to create. So this is just one motif. This was two motifs. So there's the one motif and then the second motif. This was the fill. Now this one that I didn't get to show you guys, it's right all over it. Now this one, I did just the one motif, but what I did was I came into, this was done in digitizing, so I was able to create the fill inside of the shape that I, this, um, my little dog here. But what I wanted was a different color. So I chose just red, so it's stitching on the black background, and then I physically came in and did that point create so i was able to come here and i'm just click here and click here and created a line and then i came down because i want it to start here so i clicked here and i clicked here and i created a line and then i came down and clicked here and clicked here and so i physically put in the lines so that i could have them be a different color so once again there's going to be instructions for these this guy is going to be on the library soon. And so if you have any requests for anything, um, just let me know. I'll see what I can do. No promises. The next Facebook Live, the next MySoNet live event is Wednesday, March 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Uh, Central with Wendy Owens who will teach you how to create custom quilt designs. So once again, I want to thank Janie Lance um, because she did uh, help me through a couple of things. And she is a wealth of information. So she's kind of like one of my go-tos when I need help. Um, we also have a special going on right now on the MySoNet library. So if you have a subscription to the library, you have access to all of the designs for free. But I, I have a subscription, and every once in a while I want to purchase a design because I want to keep it. Um, and right now they're, the designs at the MySonet library are 25% off. So if you're looking to uh, do some embroidery, take a look. There's a sale. Or if you have kind of some embroidery designs that you've been saving and thinking about purchasing to own, um, they are 25% off right now, and that is through the end of this month. So jump over, take a look. Um, and if there's no other questions, uh, as usual, I will run through. Um, I will kind of keep an eye on the uh, comments. So if you come late or anything like that, I will keep an eye on and try and answer questions. And then if anything comes up even later, later than that, the Ryan and Amy always tend to let me know that there's another question up. 
So if there's no other questions, I really want to appreciate and thank you for coming. Uh, I was really looking forward to this Facebook Live and really excited to share that easy uh, plaid tricks with you. And I will see you next time. Remember, March 13th um, with Wendy Owens. And I will see you, see you next time. All right. Bye.